Hello, everyone. Good morning for all of you that are in Europe. Good evening for all the lovely women that are in Australia. I am beyond excited tonight because I'm sharing the space with the lovely Susanna. She joined the Period Comeback Protocol back in March, and she is now living her life between <laughs> England and France, but she's going to tell us everything about it. But first of all, welcome, Susanna. It's such a nice uh, moment for me. It's such a pleasure to have you here tonight. Thank you. It's so good to be here. It's really nice to be kind of at this end of things and um, getting to do this. This is really exciting. When I first started um, working with you, I really hoped that I would be one of the people that would be able to that would be able to talk about what I've been through. So it's really great to be able to do that. Absolutely. And now you have the opportunity to motivate other women that are struggling during their journey, which is uh, unbelievable. So thank you for being here. Um, we had our first conversation towards the, the end of February, back in March. Um, and I remember that when we saw each other, you were struggling in many different ways. So you went through uh, fertility treatments and didn't uh, they didn't work out for you. Your blood test results were not suboptimal let's say so your fsh level was extremely low lh was non-existent and on top of it you were not sleeping at night so when you joined the period comeback protocol you were ready you are committed you were ready to to change things because life wasn't as you had uh, visualized it when uh, when you were younger so can you tell us more about that time in your life what what made you decide to actually uh, join us and uh, and move forward in recovery? Yeah, so I I came from a history of having uh, anorexia, which I had from the age of about 20 um, until maybe 26, 27. And then it came back again with a vengeance a couple of years later. And although at the point in February where I, I'd kind of, I was a, a healthy weight and um uh you know had, had started gaining weight and putting on weight and and wouldn't have called myself anorexic anymore and said that I was recovered I definitely still had so many rules and um behaviors around food which were um which it, which were just a hangover from all of that and I was training loads and loads and loads and I still felt really awful about my body so I, as, although I kind of regained some weight to become a healthy healthy size I definitely hadn't got rid of any of the anorexic thoughts any of the and the sort of the anorexic feelings about my body my body had just changed but my brain hadn't at all and I went for the first round of IVF thinking knowing that I had hypothalamic amenorrhea I went for the first round thinking I I, I, you know, this is my only choice, like, because I can't get rid of the anorexia. I've been through the NHS service twice now. That never got rid of it. It's just part of me now. I, can, I can't do it. I've never been able to do it before, and I can't do it now. And um, I went for the first round of IVF. Did not work whatsoever. I didn't respond to it in the slices. My body was just so malnourished that it couldn't do anything with what I was being given. Um, and then I started reading about it. I watched some of uh, Claudia's lives and was in the group and things like that and I thought you know what this is the first time I've ever heard someone talking about food and about themselves and about their bodies in exactly the same way that I feel about mine um so maybe they really get it maybe this group really gets it maybe Claudia really gets it and this has to be I have to get myself out of this if I want to have a baby I have to get myself out of this um and then I yeah I started talking to you we had the first session and it was the first time that I ever thought I found someone that can actually help me with this and actually help me to challenge all of these really deep set beliefs that I've got um so I came and I started working with you and um yeah just it, it was like a a waterfall of information to begin with <laughs> kind of comes down and it just comes gushing down on you like oh, okay, well, yeah, that makes sense. And this makes sense. And it makes sense that if I'm not fueling my body, it's not going to be doing the things that it needs to do. And, you know, everything sort of started to make sense um, and, and was totally realistic. And uh, I kind of got it. So I went into it really, really motivated and um, really excited to do it. And then, of course, with HA, as with lots of different recovery things, there are like peaks and troughs. And sometimes I, I feel 
it's a little bit like when you start out, you are on a very high cliff here and you want to get to the high cliff over here. And there's a big like ravine in the middle. And in, in order to get from one side to the other, you've got to go down for a bit. And quite often the going down and the being down makes the cliff on the other side look a lot higher than it did from up here. <laughs> um, and so I kind of I went in the first the second round of IVF I had um, didn't work. Uh, again it worked slightly better slightly better because I was looking after my body better but it again didn't work um, and I think I had all of the first things started happening like my body was changing I was trying to challenge um, all of my thoughts and behaviors around food but I was getting water retention and uh, I was feeling really really confused and really emotional and very scared and I stopped sleeping as well <laughs> so basically all of the symptoms the, the 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 kind of the the downside symptoms that you get to begin with all of those happened at once and it became very very tough but now I'm on the other side and I'm, I'm at the other side of the ravine I'm like hmm. Yes, well, of course I had to do that. And that was fine. And I got over it. And if you're feeling in that way, you will get past that bit as well. You've climbed the cliff. That's fantastic. And I love the metaphor, the metaphor of the ravine. I've never heard it before, but that's normally what I tell women when they join the period comeback protocol. I always um, let them know that the first months, the first couple of months are normally the toughest. And then it starts to get better because you start seeing progresses. You start getting your energy back, sleeping better. And um or overall, the life gets a little bit easier. But there is something that you mentioned. There, there is a massive difference between getting the information. So you got plenty of information uh, from myself, from the, the, the program, the online program from Jade. But there is a big difference between having the information and actually apply the information, especially when uh, you are experiencing insomnia, water retention, and you don't want to change how your body looks. So what helped you? to stick to the journey and to actually implement those changes? I think that, I think the kind of the visualization thing really, really helps. So uh, to begin with, to imagine what your recovered self would do. Um, and I think it's really important to kind of remember when you're, um, when you're kind of going through the, the recovery stage, you think that the future version of yourself, you're like, well, the recovered version of me can do this. And the recovered version of me can have breakfast and can have nuts and seeds and oats and things like that. And the recovered version of me can sit on the sofa in the afternoon rather than doing exercise. And you, you, you imagine this person as being like a future person that you have to turn into. And I think you, the more you realize that, that the recovered version of you is you now, like the same person that can make those good, healthy choices is the same person you are now. You just haven't practiced it yet. Um, like you don't, you don't have to, you don't have to become like someone else. You don't have to become Barbara Streisand. You don't have to like transform into someone completely different. It is still you. And the person that's going to be able to do those things is exactly the same person that you're sitting now. You just need to practice them. Um, and so I think, I think taking it slowly, like it's okay to take things slowly. Quite often you, you hear the, the thing of you need to eat more, you need to rest more, you need to start, um, you know, challenging all these things, you need to start challenging all these thoughts and behaviors and everything comes all at once. And you feel like you have to be doing all of those things all at once, otherwise it's not going to work and you're not going to get there. Whereas in actual fact, um, I definitely felt, I remember saying to you, Claudia, once it was like having a jumper that I had all these rules and had all these ways of being and all this, this um, structure that I had made myself. And it was like a jumper that I'd knitted myself. And um, I was trying to unravel it. Like I was trying to unravel it, but I couldn't unravel it all at once. I had to do it kind of stitch by stitch, line by line. But when I had that ball of wool at the end, I could knit whatever I wanted. It didn't have to be a jumper anymore. Like once I'd undone all of these rules, I could do whatever I wanted. I didn't have to live by them anymore. I could throw the rules out and do something completely different. But I think for me, it was definitely, definitely doing things very slowly. <laughs> there is a lot of talk and a lot of glorification of like the all in process, you know, and like do everything at once. Because what's the point in not doing everything at once? But I think that some of us and most of us, we need to climb down slowly to get to the right point. And that's exactly what I have done. And I'm still doing it now. There are still things that I come across where I think, where you know, it pops up in my head. There's like, oh, well, I don't really do that. And then I think, well, 
well, why don't I really do that? I can do that. That's fine. You know, you don't have to let go of everything all at once. You can kind of just drop things slowly and pick new things up along the way. And that, that, I think that's how I did it, definitely. And I think that it's also one of the most beautiful thing of being part of the Czech community and participating to the group call like you did, because every single week there is that question mark, like, why are you doing the things? And in that way, you can challenge your thoughts, you can challenge the behaviors, and you can really bring awareness to the things that you're doing. Because, for example, when you started, you're engaging in daily behaviors that were completely unresourceful and countering counterproductive to uh, to what you wanted to achieve but you were not questioning them they were just habit that you had formed and when you started asking yourself the questions then uh, you started to unravel that beautiful jumper and still nowadays even though you're not part of the chair community any longer because you don't need it anymore you're still questioning yourself because you're you, you know that with awareness you can actually make great changes in life um one question for you did you feel at any point in time that you wanted to give up? Definitely, like really, really did. <laughs> um, especially, especially when it first started, like my sleep went out the window and like, and I wasn't sleeping for days on end and it's horrible. And I had a long, like a really long time struggling with, struggling with sleep. Um, and I think that that started when the anorexia started. So they, you know, they go kind of hand in hand and it's almost as if like me kind of trying to challenge my, anorexic thoughts and my food thoughts meant that my sleep was like well I'm gonna hang around even longer because I don't want to let go of you and um and, and particularly as well because you have all these hormones that are coming in that you've never had before and hormones that you know they're well known for making you feel absolutely mental like even for someone that has hormones you know that there's a stereotype and it's there for a reason but if you haven't had hormones for years and years and then you start getting some it does make you feel like really rubbish and not like yourself and not like the best bits of yourself um and I think particularly when my body started to change I knew it had to happen people told me it had to happen people were told me that I needed to put on weight and I needed to gain like body fat because they didn't have enough and I was like yeah yeah I can do that that's fine and when it happens I... it did happen and to begin with I was like it's okay and then, for, then it just stopped being okay. And I stopped, I didn't have that same momentum anymore because anymore because everything felt quite difficult. Um, and it felt really awful and I hated it. I absolutely hated it and hated my body and just thought like, you know, everything like everything that I've everything I've really not wanted to happen is coming true. I'm gaining weight and I feel awful about myself and I feel awful about my body. And I remember have like, I sent you a couple of like voice notes and I sent one to Jade as well, where I was like, I don't know what to do. I just feel so awful about myself. Um, and uh, I remember, I remember you both being so lovely. I remember Jade saying that when she recovered, like she just wanted the weight off. It just felt so awful. But she said, it's not gonna last. Like this feeling won't last forever. You just kind of have to sit with it. Um, and I think at that really kind of like crunch time, you know, those are the bits that, that sort of kind of push you into gaining a little bit, like not gaining more, but like to growing a little bit more. So the bits where it becomes really, really uncomfortable are the bits where you tend to make the most progress because you have to get over some really big mind hurdles to get into the next bit. But once you've got over the hurdle, you've done it. So it's okay. So once you've gained a bit of weight, and once you've sat with it around and sat with it for a while, and it takes your, your brain quite a while to catch up with what your body's doing. So to begin with, you feel huge and you feel like you've grown so much and you feel like none of your clothes can fit and it's going to be awful and everyone's going to notice. And then after a few weeks, you're like, well, no one's noticed. I bought some new clothes and it's fine. Like, it's okay. <laughs> and I can just not look in the mirror for a few weeks and that's okay. Like, there, you know, there are a few weeks where... The only thing I did when I looked in the mirror was go, well, my face hasn't fallen off, so that's fine. Like, I don't need to know about anything else. I don't need to know what size I am. Like, as long as like, I haven't grown horns or, you know, I haven't kind of like, you know, I'm not just missing an eye this morning, that's fine. That's all I'm gonna look at. I'm not gonna body check in the mirror. I'm not going to compare myself to, to other versions of myself. I'm not going to look at anything whatsoever apart from like, you know, do I look at least presentable? That's fine. I can go. Um, and 
I think like, and now I think I feel exactly the same way that, um, you know, like I, I have the same respect and um, kind of adoration and, and just acceptance of my body that I always really wanted to have. Like, I think I, I, I understood really quickly that it was never about the size of my body. It was never about how thin I was. It was never about whether I had a flat stomach or whether I had flabby arms or any of those things. It wasn't about those things. It was always about how I felt about myself. Um, and that's the thing that I can change. And I, and I can change that. And that will stay a lot longer. Like, I can feel great about my body and I don't need to go on a diet about it. Like I can feel wonderful about my body and I don't need to starve myself for it. I can feel amazing and I don't need to work out. I can just feel amazing. Like this is so easy. <laughs> um, you know, I don't have to put myself through all of this stuff. Whereas if you have a, like a flat stomach and if you have muscles and abs and stuff like that, that you, that you want to uphold, like it's exhausting. It's absolutely exhausting. And when you do that, um, that kind of body check and that mirror check where you're like oh is my is my stomach looking okay and oh do I do I still look you know do I still look okay do I still look thin today do, do you, you know do I look as skinny as I looked yesterday like that reassurance never lasts because you have to check again and then if it gets really bad and it gets obsessive which mine definitely has done you look you look loads of times a day every time you go to the loo every time you go in the bathroom you check and then sometimes you go and check just for no reason because you you want to make sure that everything's okay and it's still fine and I don't do that anymore because that that reassurance doesn't last but the reassurance that I've got going around in my head which is like well you know what I can look in the mirror and I can see all the things that maybe I wouldn't you know maybe I wouldn't like to be there or maybe could be slightly different or you know stuff that maybe no one's going to put me on the front cover of a magazine for like I can see all those things and I can acknowledge them and they're there but at the same time, I can think I'm actually pretty cute. Like I'm still actually pretty cute. <laughs> like I've got all of those stuff, but actually I'm okay. I'm great. Like look at like, I've got a bum now, you know, <clears throat> I've got boobs, I've got, you know, I've got an ass, like, <laughs> you know, I've got some curves and stuff like, and they're not perfect curves, but they're okay. Like, so yeah, I think I can definitely, definitely do that now. You make it sound very easy, but I have to say that from a clinical perspective, uh, there is one thing that I really noticed. So if we compare the first group call that, that we had together compared to the last that was in back in June, towards the end of June. So in the first call, I remember that you used lots of negative words uh, with negative connotation attached to, to your body specifically or to yourself as a person. So there was lots of hate, disgust, uh, can't stand there. And then when you got to the last call, you are supporting other women. You're actually letting them know that all, all the feelings that they were going through, they were going to pass. And you had this dif uh, different outlook in life. And you also mentioned before that you made the changes very slowly. But if we look at the time frame, you started in March. And you are kind of feeling better and done with it. I mean, I know that you call yourself a work in progress, but we all are at, at mm -hmm. the end of the day. But March and June, there are not that many months in between. So we should also celebrate that, yes, you took one step at a time, but you have also been pretty quick at uh, listening to your body and implementing all the things that uh, they were a priority for you and that we discussed together. Um, yeah. So now... Shall we talk about the difference between the blood test results that you had in March compared to the one that you've just done? Yes, definitely. Yeah. So can you share with us, like, you don't have to go really in depth with numbers, but can you share with us what they look like back in March compared to now? Okay, so back in March, I had no S um, FSH, I had no LH whatsoever, like nothing detectable at all in my blood test my iron levels were completely through the floor and um, my thyroid levels were completely out of whack um as well so basically everything that i needed to get this kind of baby thing happening wasn't that like there were no hormones nothing was happening everything was um looking a bit dire um and then i just had some done and i've got fsh going around now i've got lh and then like just normal levels just really nice normal ordinary levels that aren't worrying or aren't abnormal 
Um, and my iron level has, has gone up again. Um, and so I'm no longer anemic, which is wonderful because I've been anemic for like seven years. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's actually come back in now. My thyroid level is great. Like everything just looks good and sort of healthy and, um, and, and sort of really good. And I think I was really nervous about getting those results back because you, you do all the work and you think, um, well, we haven't done anything though. Like, what if it actually hasn't worked? <laughs> um, and it has, <laughs> so, so that's really, really good. Um, and like your body will respond to it. Like it will, will kind of respond to what you're doing. And there are, there are lots of other good things that have um, kind of happened as well within my body. It's not just a, I've got a bit bigger. It's, you know, there are so many kind of nice things that are happening within my body that I feel a lot better about as well. So that's really good. Actually, can you tell us more about how you're sleeping at the moment? Yes, yeah, so I went from in March, I was going uh, several days a week without going to sleep at all. Um, and now when I go to bed, I actually fall asleep, which which for most normal people feels like a, um, well, yeah, you go to sleep, which <laughs> that's what you do to go to bed. But honestly, like I, I haven't been going to sleep until about half three, four, five a.m. in the morning for years and years and years. I've just been awake all night. And now when I go to bed, I fall asleep to begin with. And it's so lovely. Like, it's really nice. And when I do wake up in the middle of the night, I'm awake for a, a couple of minutes. I get a drink or something. And then I go back to bed and I fall asleep again. And that's, like, so nice. Um, that's, that's like, a big kind of weight off my mind that I can do things now and I will fall asleep and that I'm calm enough to fall asleep. Um, mm. I think another really good change is that when I, when I first met you, Claudia, I remember saying, like, I was having loads of panic attacks and I was really really wound in this tight little ball and um had to do like everything that was on my list of my things to do and all of my exercise and I couldn't eat things and I was living by all of these rules and everything was so tight and anything that kind of like dared to threaten my little tight ball was awful and I couldn't cope with it at all and um I was also everything, like everything in life, like any tiny stresses became huge stresses. And I remember the first few weeks as well, talking to you, Claudia, because I was having loads of panic attacks and feeling really awful. And um, and I haven't had a panic attack in like months now. Like actually months. It just, it doesn't like, it doesn't happen anymore because I'm so much calmer. Um, and I remember when we first started talking, <laughs> excuse me, Claudia, you were talking about kind of the benefits of meditation. Now I cannot get on with meditation. I have to, so I am I'm kind of like proof that you don't have to meditate to to kind of get to a better place. Like it just doesn't work for me. I couldn't make it work for me, and because I couldn't sit for long enough still and have someone talking to me and have you know just calm and breathing and stuff like that. It just didn't happen for me. It just felt that that made me so much more tense because I couldn't. I didn't want to sit down, and it was really really. Um, would really show that up whereas now I still don't meditate because I still can't get on with it <laughs> but I listen to audio books and I can sit on my own in a space and just kind of let my mind wander for a bit and be happy I can sit in a car for like hours and hours and hours without thinking I need to get out I need to do a walk like I need to do some exercise tonight because all I've done is sat today I sit in the car and I'm like isn't this great that I've got all this nice time to just sit and kind of relax and look out the window and listen to my audio books and like you know like I can actually I'm calm enough to do all of those things now um and it's worth saying that that calm doesn't come for quite a long time like that kind of feeling doesn't quite come for a quite a long time and it's the same with a lot with a lot of the benefits of kind of HA recovery that you that you hear about when you say like oh you'll feel calmer you'll sleep better you'll you know, you'll, you'll be able to connect with people more, you will be more fun loving, you will, you know, life will just be more fun, you'll be able to eat loads more, you will feel so much better in yourself. And you see all those benefits. But to begin with, it can take quite a while for them to all slot into place. Um, and so you, a lot of the people, and like you'll hear me now and you'll hear this kind of thing and you'll be thinking like, oh, that's what I want to get to. But that if you're going through it now, like, that's not what I feel like at all. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. Maybe I'm never going to get there. Um, but it does take a long time for them to take effect and to come in. So it took me a really long time to calm down. 
Um, and I know speaking to other people in the, in the group who have said like, they can't do breathing, they can't do deep breathing because they just feel so tense. And that's exactly how you feel. Um, but I no longer feel like this tight little ball anymore. I don't have the ball. <laughs> like I, you know, I stopped catching the ball. Now <laughs> I'm something completely different and it's fine. And, um, you know, I can go and spend time with my family and spend time with my husband and my friends and just go out for meals and, and not worry about all of this stuff all of the time. And it's really lovely. You actually really inspired me because I remember that we had a conversation about you not being able to meditate and uh, because you couldn't breathe and it was actually anxiety provoking and something that I've been looking into lately because I think that my clients are just my greatest teachers is um, EFT as a practice instead of meditation because EFT is something that you can still do there is an activity involved so you don't have to sit down in silence but it can really help you to calm down the dysregulated nervous system so as soon as I put together a workshop and as soon as um, I master that practice I'm definitely going to send you the link so that you can have a look and also give me a feedback <laughs> um, yeah. one last question for you Susanna uh, if you could go back in March and redo this again do you think that you will still decide to join the program oh yeah completely with without without a doubt um I I wouldn't have ever been able to get to this point on my own at all um I remember when I first saw the an endocrinologist that was back in November he was the one that told me that I had hypothalamic amenorrhea he said you know you exercise far too much you don't eat enough um you um you know you're 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 a health you're a healthy weight now but you're you're underweight for you and um you need you just need to go away and just eat a load of pizzas you just need to go and sit on the sofa and eat a load of pizzas and then you'll recover and then maybe in six months time you'll probably get your periods back and you'll be fine right which to, to say that to uh, to someone with a history of anorexia which he knew like that's like rule number one in the anorexia kind of treatment recovery rule book like don't tell the anorexic person to just go and eat a load of pizzas because it's not that I can't get over myself it's not that I'm vain or anything like that you know it's it, it's so much stronger than that um so when he told me that that's what I had to do you have to go away you have to stop exercising you have to eat a load of pizzas I was like I can't do that like I've tried for the last 10 11 12 years that's you know I've been trying to beat this if that's what I've got to do I'm not going to be able to get there um and then the first time working with with you Claudia I was like it was the first time I'd ever heard people talking about you know how they felt about food how they felt about their bodies the kind of the, the, the things that I knew were really like odd habits in my head, like not eating anything until half six in the evening because I wasn't allowed to eat anything, you know, like all of those things. It was the first time that I'd actually heard people being real and telling their own stories, but also saying that they'd come the other side of it. They'd come out of it. They didn't live like that anymore. And they'd very much been in that. It wasn't just, it wasn't because they weren't, you know, they weren't anorexic enough or they weren't, you know, disordered enough they, you know, they only had a touch of it. Like they were in it. They were really, really in it and really thickly in it. And now they weren't. And I, I just kind of thought, well, if they can do it, like if, if other people can get over those massive hurdles, then I think I can too. Like, I think like this is my shot now to, to get out of this. And this will be something that will help me get out of this. Um, and, you know, and, and like my family and my husband who are who are absolutely wonderful and I cannot fault them in any way whatsoever um but they have noticed like the biggest change in me and especially my parents because they've been kind of with me throughout my whole disordered eating um kind of life spectrum um and you know and they've, they've they always thought that it was just going to be part of me forever because I've never managed to find someone that could help me get out of it um, and now they're just so happy because they get to have me and a me that eats and a me that's chilled out and a me that's kind of like not killing herself through exercise and they're not worried um, about me anymore. And I remember like my one of the most uh, one of the most the kind of the loveliest things that my husband ever said to me 
when I put on a bit more weight to begin with and I was like I just feel so awful and I feel like I just so gross and so horrible and like I don't can't bear it and I don't like it anymore and he was like but Suze when you're this size I don't have to worry about you like I'm not worried about you anymore I'm not you know worried that you're not eating enough like I can just I can be happy because you're you're healthy and I really like that you're healthy I'm not scared anymore about you and I was like okay that makes sense (laughs) like you know what actually like it's not about it's not about kind of just me it's about kind of being able to give my family that reassurance and myself that reassurance as well like I don't need to worry about me anymore like my doctor doesn't need to worry about me anymore I mean he does because he should be looking after me but um you know like my friends don't need to worry about me anymore because I'm just being normal and I don't have all of these kind of same thoughts and things going on anymore I'm just normal and in actual fact like that's so much nicer for me to be able to give them that than it is for me to be able to present them with a really skinny person like they don't need that they need me to be healthy and my my husband also has a a, like a really wonderful saying where it's like no one sues no one in the world needs you to be thin no one needs you to be thin I don't need you to be thin no one else on the street needs you to be thin you don't need you to be thin you need you to be healthy and that is it like that's all they're asking for and now I can give them that and now I can give me that like and it's the best gift ever because I can just be normal and I can like myself and yeah I remember the the very first time when we had that call on the cloud I was like I just don't like myself I really don't like myself and I've tried to control myself for so long through eating and exercise in order to try and like myself a bit more because I don't feel like I'm good enough. I don't feel like I'm enough without all of this other stuff that I won't fit in without it. And now I'm like, well, I'm actually not a bad person. <laughs> like I'm actually okay and I'm fine. And I can't be bothered to hate myself anymore. And if hating myself is the bit of me that's killing myself with exercise and the bit of me that won't allow myself to eat, like if that bit if that if, if, if I can stop hating myself and I can stop doing those things it must mean I just like myself I'm just okay with myself and that's great and that's going to last so much longer than a clothes size or a weight or a flat stomach or any of those things we're designed to change we can change and you know what no one's like I've put on maybe I don't know because I, I don't weigh myself and that's one big thing that, that has been helpful for me is that I don't weigh myself so I didn't have to ever get over that hurdle of stopping weighing myself um but I've like I've gone up like two dress sizes three two to three dress sizes and no one slammed any doors in my face no one has like I haven't lost my job um like I haven't lost my house like my friends still speak to me and in fact they want to go out with me more because I can go out for a coffee now and have some cake you know and like I can go out for lunch I can go out for dinner like my husband hasn't left me my you know family haven't stopped talking to me and they still call me and they still ring me and they still tell me I love they love me like nothing awful has actually happened I've just had to buy some new clothes and some of them are really nice it's like so you know like like all of these things I thought were gonna unravel and I was gonna have to hate myself if I gained some more weight and I'd have to hate myself if I just acted like a normal person and stopped working out none of those things have actually come true um and so that's very yeah it's very grounding and uh just such a such a a check on reality of like where I had my priorities and I think I've got them in the right place now so that's good Susanna, you made me cry twice uh, in 35 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that I'm going to draw a line now. Um, I would like to thank you so much for being so honest, so raw, for really talking about all your feelings, all the things that you have gone through, uh, the good ones, the not so good ones, and the one in between. Um, thank you also for for showing, uh, for being here, for doing this live today, because I know that someone, someone out there, right now or in the future is going to resonate with your words is going to really binge on this episode and it's going to love it and it's going and something is going to switch in her beautiful brain and it's going to decide to commit to recovery so thank you for allowing someone to recover um so for all of you that are watching this live uh uh 
Thank again to Susanna. If just in case that they want to message you, would you be open to answer any of the messages or would you like yeah. to? Yeah. Would you be open to I that? Would, I would love to. Um, I definitely love for, for anyone to send me a message. If you think like that I sound similar to you, then then let me know. Because it's, it's one of the most helpful things is knowing that there are other people going through the same thing as you and other people that feel the same way as you do. So yeah, I'd be very happy for that. Oh my God, you speak my language, which is the, the whole reasons why I created the Recover from HA support group and the HA community, because we need to be part of a community of people that speak our language to really understand how to, to unravel our thoughts. Um, otherwise, if you're listening and you would like to post a comment below and to simply say, go Susanna, feel free to do so. And uh, for now, I just wish you the, the most beautiful rest of your day. And uh, I hope that I will see you back again here in, in the um, Recover from HA support group in the future. Thank you, Susanna. Thank you. Thanks so much. <laughs>